In today's Leeds News International Roundup, Chris Classen's time at Leeds could be up, Brad Rosani's exit finally confirmed, and Aronson expected to return to Leeds. Hey folks, Jay here at The View on Friday the 13th with your Leeds United News. Not a massive amount of stuff as usual this week, but we've managed to get through a full week with news every day, so that's not bad. Um, a couple of brief updates. I am doing a podcast tonight over on the Leeds House channel at 7pm. You can check that out if you want to. Um, and the podcast that I said for our channel that I would record last night, I didn't get a chance to do it last night, so that will go out tonight. Um, should be recorded at 8 and 9. I was speaking to Max and Lockie about it as well, and it should be out 8 or 9 o'clock tonight. And then for members, it should be available by 10, and then it should be available on the channel for everybody else first thing in the morning. Right, let's crack on and get into the news, and we'll start off uh, with a rattle through the international roundup so far this week. Charlie Crew continues his impressive start to the season, captaining Wales under 19s in their 0 0 draw against Austria. Darko JB and Matteo Joseph played in England under 20s 2 0 loss at the hands of Romania. JB did start the game in midfield, playing 61 minutes, and Matteo Joseph continues his return to full fitness. He came off the bench for England in the 68 minute in that game. Charlie Allen started in Northern Ireland's 1 0 win against Azerbaijan. Archie Gray played the full 90 minutes in England under 19's 0 0 draw with Montenegro. Charlie Creswell had a good game in a full 90 minutes under his belt for the England under 21 side in their 9 1 win against Serbia. Dan James came off the bench in the 15th minute for Wales, grabbing two assists in Wales' 4 0 win against Gibraltar. Joe Rodon and Ethan Ampadu were rested in that game. Liam Cooper was an unused sub for Scotland and again those three players will be a relief to Leeds that they're um, not getting too much minutes while they're out international break they could do with the rest some of them especially Ampadu um, although they're both all likely to play in Friday and weekend's games as well so we'll keep an eye on that one as well. Uh, moving on let's talk about Christopher Classen and his future at Leeds United and there's a couple of stories floating around this morning about Chris and um, according to outlet Football Scanlon. And I've probably butchered that, so apologies for that. Leeds are monitoring young Mialby goalkeeper Noel Thornquist. Again, I hope I got that one right. Uh, the 21-year-old has impressed this season for the Swedish top-tier side, who are currently sitting in mid-table. Thornquist has played 29 times for Mialby so far. He's 11 clean sheets and only conceded uh, what is it, 34 goals in his time there so far. He has also got three caps for the Eng- for the Swedish the Swedish under-21 side. Um, and Copenhagen are also listed at a club that are said to be very interested in the player, although Leeds have been labelled as the front runners for the keeper. What that means is another young goalkeeper coming into Leeds at under-21, edge of senior level, who has got first-team experience. Chris Klassen has been at Leeds for two years now and has only got one first-team appearance coming off the bench with Jesse Marsh last season. Um, he did lose his under-21 spot last year as well to the returning Danny van der Heuvel as well. Uh, although this season, Klassen has been a regular for Legion United under-21s, but another goalkeeper coming in for a spot where Klassen is already competing with Danny van der Heuvel for the number three spot at Leeds, with the fact that Carl Darlow has been brought in and Ilan Melier staying at Leeds, uh, means that someone's probably going to have to move it could be Danny or it could be Chris but at the moment it's not looking great for Chris um, he has got lofty ambitions himself he is a regular in the Norwegian 21 side as well so he won't want that to damage his career so it'll be one to keep an eye on Tassin is competing for the Legion at the third spot in the article as well so it's just one to keep an eye on for Chris it's, it's not been what I think he thought it would be I think the expectation this year was that Melia would move on Darlow would be number one and Klassen would become number two and that would be the next set of progression for him but it just hasn't happened for the player just yet anyway so um, we'll keep an eye on that one and we'll see what happens uh, moving on let's talk about Andrea Rogers and his exit from Leeds United has finally been officially 100% confirmed this week we've seen lots of documents from Company House released around the ownership of Leeds United and Ellen Road itself and earlier this week we did see documents around the ownership of Ellen Road being transferred from Rogers and over to the 49ers um, and that is in process we've also heard Angus Kinnear talk about that this stuff takes time but it is moving forward and um, the detail on the account document that was published by Company sales did state that you know, once the documents were signed the ownership would transfer across that looks like it's happening and um, but now today there are fresh documents that have been released by company's house and um, that confirm the appointment of rudy klein thomas as a director of leech united but they also do is it confirms the termination of appointment for andrea ratrazzani sandro mancucci and massimo marinelli as directors of leech united meaning that their association with leech united is now officially being 
terminated um, and Leeds will move on to a full and new ownership and a lot of changes expected to happen this week once this was rubber stamped I've heard Angus Kinnear say that you'll see some big changes around the stadium some big changes around Thorpe Arch and some potential investment if needed in January for this team and um, this whole process rubber stamps officially the end of Andrea Radrazani's tenure as Leeds United custodian and he moves on um, with his uh, his new his new club at Santorius. So um, all done and dusted. We're just waiting on the final documents which are expected not to be released until next year's accounts where it shows the ownership of Ellen Road transferring from uh, Radrazani over to the 49ers. So that's that one done and dusted and out of the way. Um, today's big story follows suit from yesterday's one as well. We, yesterday we heard that Rasmus Christensen was the plan was for Rasmus Christensen to return to Leeds United after his loan AS Rome is completed there's no options to buy there and now today it appears to be Brendan Aronson's turn Aronson has been widely expected as one of the players at Leeds United have it on loan to return because mostly because of his age and I suppose the feel Leeds paid for him as well but now according to Dean Jones at Give Me Sport he is stating that Leeds United are expecting Aronson back if Leeds get promoted to the Premier League and um, Aronson did start well at Leeds Although it went off the ball pretty quickly, his lack of physicality caused him problems all last season. It has caused him problems in Germany as well this season. And everyone has said the same thing, and I, I agree with this. There's a talented footballer in there, but he just needs to get more physical or at least be able to deal with the physicality of both these leagues. He needs to just put a little bit of bulk on him or at least work on him, his ability to, to hold players off at the very least. But there is a good player in there. I think you know if you put aside all the drama last season, there's a, a skillful footballer in there. But unless he gets the situation sorted with his uh, physical strength, it's going to hold him back and, and stop him from progressing. But um, this season, sorry, last season, he was involved in four goal involvements for Leeds. As I said, he did have his moments last year. Uh, Jones reckons that Leeds will give Aronson another crack at the Premier League when he does come back. Again, the fee that Leeds paid for him is listed as a reason for that, as well as his age. Uh, Jones thinks that the players that are out on loan currently of those players, Jack Harrison and Brendan Aronson, are the likely two to come back into the fold with Leeds United next season should they get promoted and start for Leeds, uh, or at least be involved with the squad. He said, however, though, the likes of Max Vober, Luis Sinistera, Diego Llorente and Rasmus Christensen, he reckons their time at Leeds is up where he has described, labelled them as burnt at this point with Leeds United. So uh, no comeback for them potentially, but... Um, Leeds will be looking to try and uh, reintegrate Jack Harrison and Brendan Aronson should, should Leeds get promoted. It should also be pointed out at this situation, all the loan clauses that currently exist in all these players' contracts, should Leeds not get promoted, so if Leeds do stay in the championship, all of these clauses are still active and those players could go out on another season-long loan again next season. So it is in Leeds' interest to get promoted to either get them off the books for a higher loan, a higher fee value or... Um, reintegrate some of the ones that they want to. I think, and I said this, I just think it's going to be incredibly hard for the players, to f especially the ones that forced moves out of Leeds, like Sinistera, um, to come back into Leeds. Vober the same. I think they'll really struggle to be reintegrated. I think they, they won't want to come back, and I don't think a lot of Leeds fans would welcome them back. Um, Aronson, it's, it's a mixed bag with him because a lot of fans aren't fans of him anyway. Some are. I think he's a good player. I just don't think he's capable of dealing with the Premier League or Championship with his, his physical strength. But I think if you worked on that and fixed it, Maybe he could. Maybe he could. So, um, yeah, it's a tricky one there, but um, we'll have to keep an eye on He's only a kid. He's still very young. He's got plenty of time. Um, and I do hope he turns things around. I know a lot of people are saying that they don't hope he, but he didn't force to move out here. It was it was part of a clause that was put in his contract, and we can't argue with that. But, um, yeah, interesting to see what happens. But um, if he doesn't start at the physical part of his game, there isn't really any chance of him going back to Leeds and playing on a regular basis. Just won't happen so uh, we'll keep an eye on that and um, that's going to be it for me today folks in the last one of the weekend keep an eye out for the podcast late tonight for members and first thing in the morning for everybody else as well as doing the Leeds House podcast tonight um, over on their channel as well and um, keep an eye on the community tab for that I'll, I'll put a post in there to remind people if you're interested and if you're not have a great weekend enjoy yourself and I'll see you back on Monday morning for more Leeds news have a great weekend talk to you then bye